Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a great uh, weekend. Finally, some gorgeous weather, 60s in New Jersey. So hopefully summer will get here soon because I'm ready. I'm more than ready, especially uh, living in the Northeast when temperatures rise at the high of the day only into the 30s for the majority of winter. So I'm super psyched for summer so if you are brand new to the channel guys thank you very much for uh tuning in spending a few moments with us as always the only thing we ask is if you take a second and uh, just like just hit a like be kind so hit a like uh subscribe to the channel share all that good stuff and we'll continue to try to give you as much unbiased uh rationale of what's going on in the market and that's kind of where we start off today a uh, very big kind of snooze fest uh, for the day. If you look at the indexes, yeah, pretty flat. I mean, pretty flat across the board. You have, you know, the Dow down, what, 11 points, the S&P down a point, uh, the NASDAQ uh, up five points. So pretty flat session. So if you saw yourself kind of doing a whole lot of nothing today or saw yourself much more or less active than normal, well, that's the value, right? That's the value in the day. Again, uh, the difference between a new trader and experienced trader has been doing this for a long time. Uh, an experienced trader will go into the day uh, having zero expectations, right? Zero expectations leads to uh, zero disappointments. A brand new trader will be there and think the market's open and you have to go crazy and you have to go nuts. And every single day, according to social media, is this wonderful opportunity yeah, I guess what's I guess it's all depends on what you trade. Uh, more and more, I I think the day uh, kind of you know viewed as a stalemate, and because the market is still digesting uh, that really aggressive rollover, that really aggressive pull that we had uh, last Thursday when we saw this engulfing candle, literally take out about two day uh, two weeks worth of buying. And the longer we continue to go sideways, guys, that's not a good thing. The bulls really need to uh, get back above the 10-day moving average. And if you notice the last two days, this is now deemed as a double inside day. If you notice, we got rejected at both at the top of the channel here on higher lows, two days in a row of higher lows on the 10-day moving average. And the longer we continue to go sideways, the higher probability we do test the bottom of the channel here. So for the bulls to kind of get whole again and kind of get their engines revving, we need to get back above this 443 level very, very desperately. The bears need to start losing the channels and start attacking the 50-day moving average, which is 435. So the channels continue to be very condensed. You have 443 to the upside, you have 435 in the downside. And the problem is you're going to have a lot of stocks reflect of what's going on in the market. So instead of kind of talking about the, the, the incredible stalemate that most stocks had today, let's look at some charts, right? Let's look at some charts and we'll kind of see exactly where they are, what they need to do. And the most important point is, I think, let the market speak to us to tell us what's going to happen later. Because again, if you're going to trade the market the same way when you have premium expansion channels, versus quiet contracting channels, you're going to burn yourself out. You're going to churn your account. You're going to drain your mental equity. So by the time you do get a macro channel, you're going to be so exhausted. You're you're going to misplay it or completely uh, botch the trade because you believe that every single day is exactly the same thing. So it's very, very important to understand when the market fully rests, you rest with it. When the market starts to push, you start to push. So when is the market going to start to push? 443 to the upside. 435 to the downside. Those are the key levels. And until that, it's a very, very individually uh, type of situation. When you woke up this morning, you saw Micron come up uh, and talk about raising prices this quarter by as much as uh, 20%. And it looked great. It was up $7. Everything started gapping up with this. And the years, again, here's another telltale side. They sold the stock into good news. And what happened with all the other semiconductors, right? Yeah, in the video, sell on the good news. You had SMCI, same thing, right? Sell on the news. And the question now is, 
is the market time? Is the mark is the selling uh, is the selling just a preview from last Thursday? It's going to continue again. We're not guessers, okay? I'm not going to sit here and start guessing. I'm not going to try to uh, forecast what happens to the market, but I do know the ranges, okay? I don't care if you could want to call this a bull flag, a bear flag, no flag, whatever flag you want to call it. It doesn't make a difference. We're either going to confirm the 50-day moving average or reclaim the 10. So to sit here and try to analyze a market that we think is going to happen is absolutely pointless. But what I do want to do, instead of kind of, you know, stretching this out and talking about a stalemate over and over again, let's look at some charts, right? Let's look at some key areas uh, of the market where the market could actually give us a little bit of advantage. Let's start off with Coinbase, right? So here is Coinbase. Uh, Bitcoin started surging uh, again over the weekend. This is a very big level here coming up on Coinbase. If you notice here, Coinbase got rejected today where it got rejected last Thursday, right on the 10-day moving average. So if you are a Bitcoin E or a crypto E or a trade even Coinbase, it has to reclaim back the 10-day moving average. If it could start reclaiming back the 10-day moving average, then it's going to wake up. I believe it got upgraded today. Uh, I forgot by who. I believe they got upgraded today, but it desperately needs to get back over the 10-day moving average. And if it does get back, you can see a level back into this 275 gap. Tesla. So it had a roller coaster ride on Friday. If you guys remember, Reuters put out a story that they were scraping their low uh, end models. Elon Musk came out and said, nah, you're wrong. Uh, that is false. There's nothing, no conversation of that. And then Friday they dropped the PR that they're coming out with uh, they're coming out with the taxi, the robo taxi uh, that's going to debut uh, August the 8th. Initially, I didn't think it was a big deal. Uh, but the market did speak today, and the bulls really liked that story. They liked the story, and look where it got rejected, right? Everybody see where it got rejected here? It got rejected now back-to-back -back times on the 20-day. This, this is kind of this brownish olive line. If you notice, it got rejected off the line on April the 4th, and it got rejected off the line uh, April, well, today, right? So for the bulls to have any type of traction, because they did start coming in for some 180, 182.50 calls today, for the bulls that need to get a little bit of traction, we need to reclaim back the 20-day moving average tomorrow. Any close above this 174, 175 tomorrow is going to be deemed at least an intermediate green light. So it's super important that the bulls need to get back above uh, this 20-day moving average for a potential move back to the 50-day moving average. And then uh, there is going to be a very, very important battleground uh, at that area. Uh, look at a stock like Arm, right? ARM doesn't trade great. It just doesn't. It doesn't trade great, but it's kind of trying to get out of this channel. This channel started on March the 27th. If you notice here, it got rejected off this 20-day supply, and look where it got rejected again today, off the 20-day supply. Watch ARM for tomorrow. If the semiconductors can get any type of rally and it starts reclaiming today's channel, who knows? Maybe this thing finally wakes up. This is a pretty impressive channel. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Tomorrow will be day nine, almost two weeks of consolidation. And if it can confirm and reclaim this 20-day supply, maybe it does start stretching uh, into the 136 area. Google, right? Google had a PR a couple of, you know, about, about a week ago about potentially charging for its Gemini AI. The market first started rallying the stock after hours, and then they realized, well, wait a minute, why the hell are we paying for AI? AI, everybody offers AI, and you can do it for free. Matter of fact, if you go on Instagram, Meta has their own AI. It's free. It's absolutely free. Um, so you can do that. So the stock got sold off. The good thing about it is the stock reclaimed back three days worth of selling, and now it's almost at last week's highs. Guys, let's watch Google for tomorrow. If it could reclaim the highs on April 1st, maybe this thing could start waking up. It does look really, really good. Uh, Microsoft, we were talked about this on the weekend video, kind of a, you know, kind of a nothing burger today. It still needs to get back above those Thursday's highs. It's still kind of sitting in the middle of the channel, but it is representing a little bit of strength. So we definitely want to continue uh, to watch that. Let's talk about the other side, right? Let's talk about Apple. Apple is very close, guys. Okay. Apple is very close. It's for the exception of maybe Tesla. This has been a very, very disappointing. Considering the cult following of Apple, this is a very, very disappointing stock. The worst part about this is this thing is now a day away from confirming 
a two-month range. And if this thing starts getting below this two-month range for tomorrow, this thing's going to get hit. It has, it has not demonstrated any type of rally. Even the re relief rallies keep on getting stalled out again at the 20-day supply. The last one, second to last one was on March 27th when it hit it, got rejected. And the last one was on the 4th, got rejected again and rolled over again. If the market gets pulled, guys, let's definitely keep an eye on Apple in this bottom range because if it starts losing the bottom range, folks, this thing is going to go lower. And last but not least, let's talk about NVIDIA, okay? So NVIDIA, we all know, probably one of the top performing uh, stocks on the planet in the last couple of years. We all know this, right? We all know about the thousand bidder, a thousand call buyers all over the place. Hell, we even saw some June 1180 call buyers today. These guys apparently completely bypassed the thousands. So they're, they're on their way to 1180, but whatever. To each is up, right? Who am I to judge? But here's the point, right? Everybody's expecting the video automatically is going to turn around and start going back to a thousand. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But folks, let's let's pre let's pretend, right? And amuse me here for a second. Let's pretend there's two sides of the market. Crazy, I know, right? But let's pretend there's two sides of the market. If you guys remember last Thursday, along with everything else. This thing had a massive reversal. Not only did a massive reversal, it took down the whole range of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, this is 12 days worth of selling, worth of, uh, worth of buying got erased on one candle. What happens if it doesn't rally, right? What happens in the next couple of days if it doesn't wake up? And what happens if it starts confirming that reversal candle from last Thursday? Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. If it, st if it starts confirming this whole channel here and starts taking out last Thursday's bottom channel, well, this thing has room, you know, all the way down to the 50-day moving average of like 800. I, I know it sounds crazy. I, I know everybody's expecting NVIDIA to go up 1,000, but for a person who's been trading for a quarter of a century, I kind of know there's two sides to the market. When everybody's looking at the same side at the same time, well, sometimes it won't play out that way. So again, the key levels on NVIDIA, okay, to the upside, and we talked about this last week, and we talked about this on the weekend update, it needs to reclaim back the 10-day moving average. It's got rejected there last Thursday. For the bears, and this is very, very important because the stock did not rally whatsoever today, okay, even though it took out on the gap up last Friday's highs, the point is it never rallied for the whole day. And if you look at the 60-minute view, you can see gap up in the supply, rejected and went literally sideways the whole day. So even when the NASDAQ was up 60, 70, 80, 100 points, NVIDIA didn't rally at all. So I want to watch NVIDIA for the next couple of days. Obviously, we're going to watch on the 10-day the, the moving average to the upside. But let's definitely watch last Thursday's lows because if it starts building and confirming on last Thursday's lows, again, it doesn't necessarily have to happen tomorrow. But if it starts rebuilding, starts reclaiming back last Thursday's low, there is going to give us a pretty aggressive trade back to the downside. And one smaller stock just to bring to your attention, guys, look at the stock PHAT. I think we spoke about this uh, a couple of weeks ago. It hasn't confirmed yet. But guys, for all you guys who trade the smaller price names, keep an eye on this PHAT. If it starts building above this whole channel here, that started on Fe on February the 23rd. Maybe this thing wakes up. It's not a bad looking chart uh, if this is your thing. The key, again, going into tomorrow's session, especially with the macro picture, guys, do not formulate a bias, okay? We're, we're trapped in the middle of this channel, a double inside day of this reversal from last Thursday. Stick to the individual names. We know that Apple is imminent, right? We know Apple is imminent. We know there's a potential that if Tesla wakes up tomorrow, and starts reclaiming back the 20-day moving average, we potentially could go back to last uh, week's highs. We know NVIDIA has not rallied, right? We know NVIDIA has not rallied. We know NVIDIA is a day away or candle away from maybe retesting last Thursday's low. We know there's a two-week uh, two uh, distribution that ARM is trying to get above. The, the players are there. The stages are set. Don't anticipate the moves. Just wait for them to start playing out. If you look at majority of other names, they're still trapped in the other channels. So why concentrate on those names when they're in purgatory, when they're in no man's land? Stick to the ones that are closer to the intermediate top of the range or close to the intermediate bottom of the range. And at some point, they will confirm. But when they confirm, you should get a technical directional bias 
in that direction. Guys, we'll see. You know, we'll see. Again, the most important thing, guys, like we say this all the time, and I said this a few moments ago, when the market rests, you rest. When the market gets aggressive and channels start expansion, then you step on the throat with extreme prejudice. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And with God's help, I will see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys. Have a great, great night.